We are ready now for the men's mile. World record in the indoor mile is held by that man right there, Eamon Coghlan of Ireland. Earlier you saw Marty LaCourie's strategy piece, which centered on Coghlan, and you mentioned the fact that at 34, Marty, the acceleration is still there. In fact, he may be just about as good now as he's ever been. He probably is. It's very strange for anyone at 34 to still be winning races at this level. And usually as you get older, you lose your speed. You find other ways to win the race. But Eamon still runs the same type of race he ran when I first met him when he was 18. All right, let's go down to public address announcer Bob Hirsch, an institution himself in track and field, to introduce the runners in the men's mile. The next event, the men's mobile mile. Here are the competitors. Number 424. From the Indiana Track Club, he ran a sub-four-minute miler earlier this year at the Hoosier Invitational, James Murphy. Number 349, another sub-four-minute miler representing the AccuSplit Sports Club, Mark Fricker. Number three, he ran two sub-four-minute miles on the Grand Prix circuit this year at Dallas and at the George Mason meet, representing the Atlanta Coast Club, Jim McKeon. Number 487 from Australia, a member of that nation's Olympic team. He is the Australian national champion and record holder, Michael Hillert. Number 501, the Canadian national 1500 meter champion, British Commonwealth Games bronze medalist, now standing second in the indoor Grand Prix for the mile, Dave Campbell. Number 44, Runner-up in this event last year, the second fastest miler in history, a member of the Irish Olympic team and the Irish national outdoor record holder with a personal best of 349.77, Ray Flynn. Number 390 from Athletics West, the winner of this event in 1982. He was an Olympic finalist and he was our national outdoor champion in 1984 and 1985. Last summer, he lowered his personal best to 349.80, Jim Spivey. And last but not least, number 81 from the New York AC, the former NCAA champion from Villanova. Last month, he won his unprecedented seventh Wanamaker Mile victory. Last week, he set a world indoor best at 2,000 meters at the Mobile Grand Prix of free meet at the LA Times. He's the 1983 world champion at 5,000 meters, the world indoor record holder, the only man ever to run under 350 indoors, 349.78 for Eamon Coughlin. And the last man introduced was the chairman of the board, coming off what was for him a disastrous 1986 season with a totally brilliant 1987 season. Again, 11 laps on this 160-yard board track, the indoor mile. Nice piece of trivia, Marty. The fastest man in the history of the indoor mile is from Ireland. So is the second fastest, Ray Flynn, who's in this race as well. Well, Ray hasn't been running that well this year. He won't be... Uh tough competition for Eamon. It doesn't look very quick at this point, and this has the potential to, do, to really degenerate into a very slow, slow tactical race. Everyone knows that Eamon is very strong, and if it's a fast pace or a slow pace, that he can win the race. And what might just happen here is a very slow, slow pace. Right now we have Jim McKeon leading with uh, Ray Flynn in second place. Mark Fricker is the one who can change the whole race. He is back right now in fourth place. The redhead, black shorts, black top. He's the kind of a guy who will go out and take the lead. We'll know after the first quarter what kind of race it'll be. They'll go by the quarter, they'll hear that. It'll take another lap for everyone to make up their minds, and then we can almost pinpoint what kind of race the rest of it's going to be. Eight laps ago, you set up the leaders for us, Marty. It's McKean in first place. Flynn holding on in second place. Mike Tillert of Australia in third place. Mark Fricker fourth behind them. Quarter in 62.2. Pretty slow. Okay, this will be a painful race to watch. People ask me how I feel sitting up in the stands. 
Well, when they're going fast and they're chasing a rabbit, they're setting a world record, that kind of race is not really painful. What's painful is this slow, tactical thing where every step is like running on a minefield. Eamon Coughlin's in last place now, and he really doesn't know if he's going to be able to get by those nine people without catching an elbow. Uh, just as you're about to pass somebody, someone else will step out in front of you. I remember Eamon doing that. So he's making one fairly big move. He's going to have to get up to second or third place. If he settles back in here, Hilliard of Australia can box him in. But watch Eamon. He's got eyes in the back of his head. And he has right now moved himself up into fifth place. Appears for the moment to be talking to the man just inside of him, James Murphy, number 424. Earlier, Eamon told us about his love for running on indoor boards. I like doing that quite an awful lot. Um, you know, when I grow up running on the roads or on the grass in preparation for an indoor uh, workout, particularly on the boards, I can feel awful. My legs can feel awful on those surfaces. But once I hit the boards, there's something about the spring that puts something into my legs that's very, very special. And I can't describe exactly what it is, but I certainly get the feeling that I can really fly endlessly uh, and get tremendous exhilaration of speed on those bank turns that I don't get on the road, on the grass, or for that matter, even on an outdoor track. Little more than three laps to go. It is still McKean on the lead. Flynn looks alive tonight. Coughlin is on the inside in third place. He made an amazing move while we were listening to him. Jim Spivey was almost checking Eamon. He was just watching Eamon, keeping him boxed on the inside. He wasn't going to go up and uh, take the lead or anything, just watching Eamon. Eamon was totally boxed in. You know what Eamon did? He passed on the inside. Fortunately, Mark Stricker's a gentleman. He didn't give him an elbow in the chin. Two laps to go. Coughlin moves into second place, chasing his countryman Ray Flynn now. Flynn will try to hold off the man who knows him better than any other miler in the world. And Eamon Coughlin knows Ray Flynn so well that you suspect he can just sit here and read his leg and choose the right moment. Well, Spivey might be able to do something here, but Campbell from Canada is now blocking his way. It's going to be Eamon's race. Really, will Flynn be able to hold on? Ray Flynn trying to score a victory over Eamon Coughlin, but there he goes. Coughlin, as he has done countless times, just motors away on the last turn and pulls home to another Madison Square Garden mile victory. And I said earlier that there may not have been a more predictable result than Kabea's victory in the 3,000, but here's another one. Just barely under four minutes, 3.59, 3.00 unofficially, but really... The people have to realize that they could have seen a world record tonight, but what they saw was even more masterful. Eamon had a lot of things thrown at him during this race, and like Houdini, he escapes them all. 55 second last quarter for Eamon Coughlin, and there was the burst of speed right there in that replay as he simply left Flynn in the dust. What do you do if you're Ray Flynn? You know it's coming, there's nothing you can do about it. Well, Eamon's burst of speed gets him out of a lot of tight spots and Ray did what he needed to do. He, he couldn't take the lead with a half a mile to go. He had to wait till three laps to go. They've run hundreds of races against each other. He took his best shot but at this point in time he was overpowered by Eamon Coughlin. Four months from now in Europe it may be the reverse. There's Eamon with his children. Lives in Rye, New York. He has all the qualities that a New Yorker admires. We have a lot of Irishmen in New York, and Eamon... More than, did you know we have more than they have in Ireland? <laughs> I'm sure Eamon knows that, and he's one of them. The Irishman from Rye, New York, with another victory. Now, that was just one of the many climactic moments in this meet, and it was an exciting one, but we've got plenty more coming. Dashes, sprints, of course, there'll be more things happening in the field events. And right now, once again, we are going to check in on the pole vault, which was the showcase event in the meet last year because of Sergei Bubka. Here again is Dwight Stone. All right, and right now, Frank Lipsky is down on the track with, once again, the winner in the mile, Eamon Coughlin. Get your shirt on. Eamon? Hello, Eamon. Hi, Frank. You just won a race. You ran with a slow pace, 62, 204, 304. Were you concerned that the pace was slow? Not really. You know, the objective, obviously, in a championship is to try and win the race. And with the World Championships next week, I also felt maybe have to try and conserve a little bit of energy. But uh, with a slow pace, sometimes it feels a little bit harder. And I was a little bit stale, perhaps, out there. 
but I was able to kick well over the last quarter and I felt quite comfortable then. Did you have any concerns for the Um Not really. Uh, my only concern was on the last lap, Ray was running very, very wild as he was approaching each turn. And at one time I considered going on the inside with a lap to go. And then I considered going on the inside with a half lap to go. So I had to go really wide to go around him. I didn't want to get disqualified. You look back right around here with a little less than a lap to go. You look back looking for somebody coming on? I wasn't sure, you know. Uh, Mike Hillard has been training very, very well out on the West Coast for the last couple of weeks. And Mike's got tremendous credentials uh, over shorter distances speed-wise. So I felt I had to watch to see if he was there. Now, uh, since 1975, as we learned this week, you have won 51 mile races. How have you survived this long? I really don't know what it is. Perhaps it's the uh, clean, fresh air of Ireland and now New York City that is helping me to sustain a long career. But like a bottle of wine, the older the better. So perhaps, you know, I have another 50 in me. Whether I win them or not, I don't know. I, <laughs> I certainly hope so. Congratulations. Okay, Frank, thank you. Back to you, Jim. Wonder what he'll do when he's 40. Well